but a bit. Okay, so we're going to talk about an evolution of network telemetry. So networks have been changing significantly over the last few years. Um, we've seen performance increasing very rapidly, and we've been hearing about easy to manage and self-driving networks. And it turns out that one of the common threads that run through these different requirements is network telemetry. So we've been hearing a lot of new ideas about that, and one of the questions that, that pops to mind is, are we reinventing the wheel here? Ping and traceroute have been around forever, right? So obviously they're not as scalable as we'd like them to be. Old school passive monitoring provides a lot of telemetry information like counters and statistics, but it gives you information about the current device. Carrier OEM basically gives you a lot of telemetry information about the network using dozens of protocols and standards, but it's not as fine-grained as we'd like it to be in modern networks. So what we've been hearing a lot in the last few years, it's actually what Roberto was talking about, um, is piggybacking telemetry information onto data packets. And we see that in IOAM, in INT, in AMPM. So we'll talk a bit about each of them. So first of all, IOM and INT. The idea is that every switch or device along the path pushes telemetry-related metadata onto the data packets. And then some of that information is exported to a server. So obviously, you get very detailed per packet and per hop information. And obviously, the drawback is that you add overhead to each data packet. So this is IOM and INT. This is AMPM. It's being pursued in the ITF. And the idea is that you use a single bit in the header of each data packet. It's called the marking bit. And it basically divides the traffic into consecutive blocks of data. So for each block, you count the number of packets sent, the number of packets received, and now, based on that, you can compute how many packets got lost. So AMPM uses a single bit per data packet. It can allow to measure loss and delay in the network. Obviously, you don't get the detailed information that you can get from IOM or INT. So are we reinventing the wheel here? The short answer is no, we're not. We should be looking at this as an evolution of telemetry approaches. So we at Marvell have been designing packet processor devices that support network telemetry for quite a few years now. And our philosophy has always been not to support specific telemetry protocols, but to provide a tool set which is diverse and flexible and enables the different telemetry approaches we talked about. So for example, Programmability, it's something that Roberto talked about a lot. In the Prostera architecture, every packet is subject to both fixed and programmable processing, which is based on a packet header and on internally computed metadata. We believe in timestamping everything, so every packet that goes into the device is timestamped in the port at full wire speed. And that timestamp is then used in the internal metadata. And then a timestamp can be incorporated into the header of some or all of the packets. And all these timestamps are based on an accurately synchronized clock. And that means you can correlate the time of day of events across the network. Now notice that if you're using the timestamp in the internal metadata, that enables a lot of smart time-based features like periodic probing or like time flip. So a few words about time flip. A time flip is a TCAM lookup which uses the timestamp. The timestamp is part of the TCAM key. So that means you can define rules which are applicable in a specific time range. For example, if you set one bit in the timestamp field, that allows you to define a periodic time range 
which is exactly how we implement AMPM. Okay, so by, by the way, AMPM is inspired by the day-night cycle. Okay, so just a reminder, AMPM allows you to measure loss and delay in the network, which allows you to detect when there's congestion. And another way to detect congestion is using IOM or INT. And then you need to be able to export the telemetry information to the server, but the server can't accept all the telemetry information of all the packets all the time, right? So we provide a diverse set of options of how you can selectively export some of the telemetry information, for example, when there's congestion or periodically. So when we say periodically, for example, you can export the information of one packet per second, or you can export the information of all the packets in the last millisecond of the second. And this can be done, of course, on a per flow basis or on a per board basis and so on. Another thing we can do is export telemetry information when we detect congestion or when there are packet drops or when the rate increases. Now what happens if you want to enjoy the detailed telemetry information of IOM and INT, but you don't want to pay the expensive overhead in the data plane. So what we can do is use the marking bit of AMPM to indicate specific packets. For these specific packets, all the switches along the path are going to export the telemetry information to the server. And now the server can easily correlate the telemetry information from the different devices based on that marking bit. So you just need a single bit in the data plane header. So going back to the evolution, we see a lot of different stages here. And by providing a diverse and flexible tool set, you can support not only the last stage of the evolution, you can actually support all the different stages along that evolution, as well as future stages of the evolution. That's a good time for questions or comments. Great. Uh, any questions? Oh, here we are. Perfect. Uh, I know you guys support packet sampling. Can you export the metadata along with the packet samples? Yeah, so first of all, I talked about IOM and INT. So when you do packet sampling, uh, one of the things you can do is export the packet with its INT header or IOM header, which already includes uh, the telemetry-related metadata. And one of the things you can do is you can add a proprietary header, which uh, adds additional metadata. It's not based on any protocol or standard, but, but you can add some more information to that. You just mentioned standard. Is any um, um, progress on that aggression? How do you pass the metadata from um, a switch of one vendor to the next switch of another vendor? How do you uh, think? You mean in IOM or INT, or you have the, I, uh, the whole telemetry, right? Because you need uh, the end-to-end -end delay. You need to uh, the details the, on each of the buffers, right? how do you guarantee your uh, metadata not being dropped at the next hop? OK, so one thing uh, is interoperability between switches. And the other is interoperability between the switch and the collector. OK, so in terms of the switches, you basically need a protocol, either INT or IOM. Each of them defines a slightly different protocol, which defines the header, uh, which indicates to the switches which metadata they need to incorporate, uh, how many bytes, and so on. So that defines what the switches need to do in terms of the packet format and what needs to be in there. And one of the things that um, we're currently working on in the ITF is to also uh, define how the switch uh, talks to the collector. I mean, when you export the information, what that needs to look like. 
It's a great question. I think Hyongra also brought up some of this, some part of the challenges that uh, Alibaba was running to and during their uh, uh, work on uh, telemetry as well. Right. Other questions? Okay, perfect. There we are. I guess, you know, it took us as an industry a while to just all agree how to increment, you know, TTL in the packet, so. Um, you talked about the overhead in the data plane of running IOM slash INT all the time. What kind of, you know, um, bandwidth slash latency is that causing if you do run that all the time? Well, obviously in terms of the bandwidth, it's very easy to measure because when you're adding the metadata, uh, it adds tens of bytes, sometimes more than 100 bytes per packet. Uh, which is a significant number. I mean, it can be maybe 10% of the bandwidth in the network. Now, some operators may think that's negligible, but others may consider it uh, significant. Uh, in terms of latency, I would say that uh, most of the time you wouldn't feel it, but when there's congestion in the network, that 10% may be very significant. I mean, once you need to measure the network, that 10% may be exactly the difference between congestion and no congestion. Okay, is, uh, is Raj from Eventech? Oh, okay, sorry, great. Do you want to go ahead and just get set up? And we have time for one more question. Yeah. Uh, I have a very fundamental question with INT. So today we kind of uh, have SNMP and, uh, uh, you know, SFlow, which we kind of poll and get information or whatever, right? So it does a kind of a, a, a very logical level of taking samples, et cetera, and all that. Uh, in INT, what we are trying to do is collect the whole, long, whole uh, lot of information. So the problem set is uh, we need to collect a certain sample, the right sample and the right data, you know, to get the right whatever questions we are trying to answer. So are we trying to solve a bigger problem or trying to get a lot of data instead of, you know, uh, looking at getting the right sample and the right thing, you know? I think that's a great question. I mean, that's exactly one of the challenges that need to be worked out at this point. And I started talking about what we do in the ITF of how you do the collection. And INT defines what the data plane needs to do. But then you need to define, like you say, how you export that information. So SFlow can be a way you can export the information using the INT headers to the collector. But you need to decide how often you send that information or when exactly to do that, and that's, uh, I agree, that's a very important uh, challenge or a very important question of, of how you decide to do that, and at the end of the day, how the collector can actually use that information and uh, work out what the network needs to, what needs to be changed in the network or what the current status is. Great. Okay. Maybe you all can take it offline, and uh, thank you very much.